Okay, so this is another Quartz Composer tutorial, and today I thought we'd try and make things appear and disappear on the screen. And it's not exactly as simple as you would expect. So, what we're going to do is that we're going to use a template. If this screen doesn't appear for you when you first start it up, then it's just File and New from Template. Okay, we're going to want a graphic animation. Press choose. I'll just move this slightly. This can go over here, this can go here. And what we're going to do now is that you see all these grey things. Half of them aren't, aren't really doing anything, and I personally don't like working with them. So just highlight them all, delete them. They're not needed. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is to make the animation either speed up or slow down by a certain amount. And whilst you could use the patch time like we did last time, Apple have kindly added an integrator function for us which, well, does the same thing basically. So I'm going to set it to 0.2. A higher value means it'll move faster. And of course a lower value will mean it'll move slower. Okay. So now that we've got the speed of our animation sorted, why don't we change some more bits about the animation? You'll notice that the cloud uh, patch doesn't really have that many inputs. And that's because it's a collection of patches. Kind of like a folder. So if you just double click on it, you can see all of the patches that it contains. Okay, and in order to edit these clouds further, we've got to change some of these patches. I could try explaining what all of them do, but well, there's not really that much point, since it, it doesn't really matter, because the end product is going to be the same anyway. Plus, I don't really know how to use, um, how the thing works anyway, so, you know... Whatever. Anyway, let's change the image. So if I just drag something in, this'll do. Oh, okay, I'll try again. Da, do, do. Okay, so as, as normal, just drag the image there to the sprite patch, so, so you can tell the sprite that you want to use that image and not something else. And now that we've changed the image, let's try and change the size. And also how they grow and how they appear and disappear. You can, note, you can see that the width and height inputs of the sprite are controlled by this interpolation patch. Interpolation is something that's kind of hard to describe but it's much easier to do than actually to explain how it works and what it is. Basically, the start value is the value at the start, and the end value is, well, obviously the value at the end. So if you set it to, say for instance, 0.5 like I've done, it'll start off at 1 and then shrink to 0.5. But what about if we want to control how it shrinks? Well, first of all, you've got to pick a predefined interpolation curve. You can use a customized one if you're feeling daring, but well, it's much easier to just use one of these presets. Try experimenting with them and seeing what they do. There's no sin in experimenting. Um, you can see that they all change the motion slightly. So pick one that you've find interesting, but right now I'm going to pick linear. Okay. So now that we've got them starting off and, and growing and shrinking or whatever you want, let's try and make them either fade out or fade in. So, there, as you would have, might have guessed, there's another interpolation patch that does this. It's right here. So, as you'll notice, the interpolation and this colour 
patch here both feed into color transformation and the interpolation patch transforms the color by changing its alpha or transparency value. Okay, so color goes in, its transparency gets changed and then it feeds in to sprite. So, as normal, you can editing the start value will change the starting transparency. Transparency has to be a number between 0 and 1. And of course you can change the ending transparency. As well as the interpolation mode, if you uh, choose the predefined option, which I recommend you do. And also you'll notice that there's something called repeat mode. It's usually best if you keep this on loop. Okay. Okay, I'll just alter the ending size and we can see that that looks absolutely fine so far. Okay. Um, again, as you can see, changing the start value will change the starting transparency. A transparency of 1 means that it's completely opaque and a transparency of 0 means that it's invisible. Okay. So what about if we actually want to change the colour of the leaves? You could just change the colour of the original image you use, but, well, there's a colour patch there for a reason. You'll notice that it has a green dot, and what that means, if something has a green dot, you can't edit it in the current set of patches you're in. You have to go to Edit Parent to get out, and then edit it, using the entire clouds patch. Okay, so you can change it to whatever colour you want there. Okay, well, hope you enjoyed this, hope it's been useful, etc. Thanks for watching, and next time we'll try and combine what we've learned in the past two tutorials and make things appear and disappear that also move. Okay, again, thank you very much for watching and goodbye.